your home for the Jay Thomas Show is AM 970 and FM 93.1 WDAY. Thursdays with Tony, part of WDAY Midday. I'm probably best known for being a now former Fargo City Commissioner from 2015 to 2022. I'm also a lifelong Fargo resident, a member of the North Florida Air National Guard for the last 20 plus years, and a father, and uh, this is my community. I love the city of Fargo, I love the region, and I'm looking forward to this show being an opportunity to continue to communicate with the people of Fargo and, and entertain and hopefully educate in some cases about the issues happening in our region. Thursdays at 11, here on WDAY. Radio. 970 WDAY AM and 93.1 FM. Fargo Moorhead. And welcome to WDAY Weather and Ag in Focus. I'm Chief Meteorologist Dean Wysocki alongside our wonderful, talented Ag Director Bridget Riedel and our meteorologist extraordinaire Justin Storm. And thank you guys for joining us today. Boy, what a difference a day makes. We've got some heavy snow bands stretching right now from uh, just south of Grand Forks uh, out around uh, through about Tower City, Valley City, and this is now moving into the Fargo area. And uh, just looking out the window here, visibilities have uh, really dropped to about a quarter to a half a mile here uh, with some heavier snow moving through the area. Again, if you're going west on 94, uh, some very heavy snow right now, just entering areas around Castleton, uh, and just between Castleton and Tower City, a very heavy snow band there. That will be moving across the FM area here within the next hour, so expect uh, further to deteriorating conditions. If you have any road reports, let us know. Give us a call, 701-293-9000. That's 701-293-9000. Not expecting a lot of snow, inch or two, but, boy, you whip up 30, 40-mile-an-hour winds with that. And we're going to see some uh, pretty slippery travel and reduced visibilities out there, guys. And along with those lines, I'm just curious, um, how long until those that snow moves through? Are we winding down? You mentioned some snow bands right now between Castleton mm -hmm. and Tower City, but they look like they might be on the move rather quickly. Yeah, it's pretty quick moving. I think the heaviest part should be out of here by 3, 4 o'clock and then uh, just scattered snow showers after that. So... Um, it, it's a quick moving system um, by six, seven o'clock tonight. Most of this should be totally out of the entire area. And then we'll actually see clearing skies. And after a, uh, a winter weather advisory, which is in effect this afternoon, that changes over to a wind chill advisory tonight with uh, wind chills 20, 25 below tonight. So it's, it's going to get chilly. Yeah, that's an under. So, yeah, if you're Plug out, in. if you're out traveling, make sure to have that winter weather survival kit packed in their car. You don't want to get stranded out in uh, in conditions like this, that's for sure. Well, and if you're not only that winter survival kit, but if you're planning on being somewhere tonight and you can plug in your vehicle, if it's going to be outside, that might not be a bad idea. Plug in those block heaters, keep the vehicles warm. Right. We have lots of farmers that are putting tractors in the shop overnight or plugging them in so that we make sure everything starts tomorrow for chores or yet again this evening as our temperatures start to fall. And uh, Plug in the dog food dishes, make sure that all those pets still get water because we know that our ranchers are doing a great job of making sure water still flows for the livestock as temperatures fall. They have an increased intake in water and feed in order for them to generate internal heat. They're like their own walking combustion engine to stay warm. That's right. And you know what? We'd like to remind people uh, next Wednesday, December 7th, we will have our winter weather outlook in fact uh, the lrc has been set so we know the cycle length we can absolutely pinpoint when the arctic outbreaks are when we can expect these storm systems to roll through the northern plains and we're going to even extend this out into spring for our ag community so you'll definitely want to tune in uh next wednesday from two o'clock to five o'clock on the jay thomas show right here on uh, WDAY. It's going to be a great weather special. And uh, again, the ag community is really going to want to pay close attention to this, Bridget. They really do. And I've had lots of folks question, you know, send questions asking what time we're going to start so they don't miss it. Uh, just a quick note that one of our listeners, uh, Jen, said with this quick moving system, should she expect some temperatures in the 60s by Monday? Just maybe <laughs> settling overly high expectations <laughs> there for December, I'm afraid. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's <laughs> that's 
Boy, that would be nice, wouldn't 60 it? 60 somewhere. 60, not here. In fact, I There's think if, 60 somewhere. if we could crack 40, it'd be a, it'd be a blessing, I think. <laughs> That'd be a home run right there. Uh, well, coming up on the show today, we're going to have our guest, Randy Nelson, Clay County Extension Educator, on again. At this point, I think we ba we basically give him a promotion to co-host at this point because we have him on so often. So <laughs> love having Randy on. It's your opportunity to ask any of those uh, garden, indoor plants, uh, holiday plants, any question uh, that you have, give us a phone call, 701-293-9000. Almost guarantee Randy will be able to answer any of those questions. And we're going to get to a couple of ag topics today, including North, North Dakota Ranch has bird-friendly habitat certifications and Minnesota corn growers looking for a research project, as well as a couple other ones. So we'll try and get to those, as well as our guests. Stay tuned. Weather and Ag in Focus we will be right back. From ABC News. I'm Mark Remillard. A federal appeals court shutting down an independent review of the materials seized from former President Trump's Florida home, meaning the Justice Department will once again have complete access. The appeals court said the district court judge in Florida lacked jurisdiction to appoint a special master to go through the items seized at Mar-a-Lago. The decision removes an obstacle to the Justice Department's investigation into Trump's handling of classified material. The law is clear, the appellate judges said. We cannot write a rule that allows any subject of a search warrant to block government investigations after the execution of the warrant, nor can we write a rule that allows only former presidents to do so. The decision now frees the Justice Department to use all the documents as evidence as they decide whether to file charges. Aaron Katursky, ABC News, New York. Congress stepping in to avert the possibility of a nationwide rail workers strike, passing legislation forcing unions and companies to agree to a settlement proposal. Biden says he'll sign the legislation. It's coming down to the wire for Georgia's Senate runoff election, dueling rallies between Democrat Raphael Warnock and Republican Herschel Walker. You deserve a senator who actually lives in Georgia. Herschel Walker holding his own rally, saying he is the leader Georgia needs. People in Washington have become weak. What they want to do is make all these other leaders think that America is weak. I'm telling us, we're not weak people, we're good people. Walker delivered the same message he has for months on the campaign trail, on stage bashing Warnock, who is irreverent, for not believing in redemption. That's ABC's Lionel Moise, the election on Tuesday. Rapper Kanye West once again being suspended from Twitter after the company said he violated its incitement of violence policy. West tweeted an image of the star of David merged with a swastika. A rural Arizona county that refused to certify its election results has now reversed course after a judge ordered the Cho Cochise County Board of Supervisors to do so. You're listening to ABC News. President Trump has announced, and Ron DeSantis is rising fast. Who do you support for 2024? Newsmax wants to know what you think. Vote in the Newsmax poll. Just text the word FISH to 39747. That's FISH to 39747. It takes just seconds. Text FISH to 39747. Let your voice be heard and watch Newsmax today. There's still time for business owners to claim their federal aid under the Employee Retention Tax Credit Program. Cash refunds of up to $26,000 per employee are available for employers who continue to pay their employees during the COVID epidemic. You can claim the credit even if you received a PPP loan. The licensed CPAs and tax professionals at Ferguson, Timar & Associates have been serving business owners across the country for over 15 years. Our tax credit specialists are available now at 833-ERC-FILE. That's 833-ERC-FILE. You did it again, Fargo Moorhead. Thanks for voting Fix It Ford Auto Care, the best auto care of Red River Valley three years in a row, including the categories of best tire retailer and best customer service. Plus, Fix It Ford Ministry won best local nonprofit. We're honored and we promise to continue serving our great community, providing you the best auto care experiences. Fix It Forward Auto Care, the name you trust for car repair. Fix It Forward Auto Care. Tailgaters welcomes newly signed Nashville recording artist Terry Mackner with special guest Gina Powers tonight live at Tailgaters. Music begins at 7 with food and drink specials. $3 off any large thin crust pizza, only $4.25 for Bacardi and Windsor drinks, and $5 Chuck Norris and Jaeger bombs. And tomorrow, watch the Bison playoff game with live music from Karma to help celebrate after a win. With $4 pints and bottles and $4.50 Bloody Marys. $10.99 half-pound burger special as well. Tailgaters, corner of Maine and University, downtown Fargo. Go. 
afternoon, 112 right now. Some light snow and strong winds leading into some traveling implications around the area. Not too bad on the roads, but visibility is what's being hit the hardest. Seeing about half a mile to a quarter mile visibility in some spots for the most part. Visibility under a mile around the area. If you want to give us a phone call, let us know how those roads are. Give us a road update out there. Give us a phone call. Let us know. 701-293-9000. would love to hear from you. Or you can always reach us via email during or after our show with any weather or ag-related topics or questions at weather or flag or weather or ag at flagfamily.com. Also remember to find us on Facebook or YouTube Live where you can find all of our past shows and so much more. Now, for those just joining us, we'll touch on the forecast here in just a moment for what's going on. But like I said, we're just seeing some reduced visibility under a mile around the area with those strong winds and light snow. But Bridget, why don't we do a, an ag topic first? Because I already want to know, and I can't wait, what's going on with the North Dakota ranch that has the um, bird-friendly habitat certification. All right. Who's familiar with the Autobahn Society? And I don't mean the Autobahn, you know, the fast-driving highway in Germany. <laughs> but the Autobahn <laughs> Society. <laughs> There's a difference. Autobahn is always known for its association with birds and bird watchers uh, use their guides and their information very clearly. Well, there's a ranch out near Medora, North Dakota. Kim Shade owns the Meadow Lark Ranch and that ranch just received certification from the Autobahn Society. That means that they have a great partnership going between birds. So for you who are avid bird watchers and want to Take the time to go out there and maybe not today, but on a different day and do bird watching as well as enjoy the grasslands and the surrounding area with pasture, cattle, and also plenty of livestock. You are invited to the ranch. As always, I would suggest you probably call ahead, but Kim Shades Ranch is listed with the National Audubon Society as a great site and again, certified by that society for bird watching and habitat. So I thought that was pretty exciting. I don't know how many people are bird watchers out there, maybe more than I know. I'm not sure. There definitely more people than that than will admit it. Okay. So any of you guys get into bird watching kind of or bird feeding? I like You're birds. A bird I, I like yourself. feeding them. Oh, okay. it's great. We mm -hmm. used to have a humming, yeah. hummingbird feeder, and the hummingbirds would come mm -hmm. over, and uh, we'd sit out in the back porch, read the paper, and uh, read the paper. Yeah, it's been a while, and and, yeah. uh, <laughs> and the hummingbird would just come. You, you'd kind of tilt the paper down, and the hummingbird would see you, and he'd go over and, and start on the feeder. It was funny. It was, but yeah, they're, it's relaxing. I think it's relaxing to do that. Yeah, we got a bunch of bird feeders set up at our house. And I think hummingbirds are my favorite. They come in, they're, they're stealthy. All you hear is that little of their wings yeah. when they come through. And <laughs> I have some feeders by my patio table too. And, you know, it's best to have some cone-shaped flowers like tiger lilies for them to put their beaks mm -hmm. into. That's their favorite. Um, my favorite hummingbird story, though, you guys, this one, I hope you laugh a little bit anyway. But uh, we used to rent a cabin near Spiritwood Lake, North Dakota, north of Jamestown. And I was gone for the afternoon, but had asked my husband if he would hang up the hummingbird feeder. And he and a couple of buddies were happily enjoying a beer on the porch that afternoon. And he filled it as I'd asked and was carrying it out of the cabin. And his buddy looked at him and said, there's no hummingbirds around here. You're wasting your time. <laughs> he hung the feeder up. And within 10 minutes, there were birds on it. So that just goes oh, to wow. show if you're in the right place at the right time, you too can be a bird watcher. <laughs> the fun thing is when you get them to the hummingbirds or even just any of the other little songbirds, you get them to eat out of your hand. You ever have that happen before? No. Oh, it's, you, you gotta be a, still. There's there's a name for like a, for a, a bird place. It's not an apiary. That's bees. But I, I can't think of the name of, of where all the birds are at. But there's a place in Oklahoma. And they have uh, finches and so forth. And you can step in the cage with them and they will eat right out of your hand. Yeah, we would uh, we'd set up seed either on the deck railing and they'd get used to it. And they, they would fly right up next to you like half a foot away or right next to your head. They'd be picking seed off the deck railing. And after a while, you start putting it in your hand and they'll just land on your hand and they'll start taking the sunflower seeds out. I don't know, it was kind of fun. I always got a good kick out of it. And I think, you know, if you like birds, um, a few sunflowers in your yard, maybe not up against the house because then the birds just poop on your house, but maybe some <laughs> sunflowers at the back of your yard would be great to attract more bird species in for you to view. Um, just like you said with those bird feeders, my neighbor swears that blue jays like walnuts if you put those out. Hmm. Oh, 
There you go. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to get our guest on the line now, guys. I'm very excited to get Randy Nelson back on here because I know there's a lot of people with a lot of either Christmas plants or house plants or even just in general. What do I? What, what should I be doing through the winter? Well, Randy's going to be joining us here in just a few moments, and if you'd like to ask him a question about anything, Give us a phone call, 701-293-9000. Let us know if you want to get those via email. You can send it to us. We'll read them on air to weather or ag at flagfamily.com. But say you just bought some poinsettias. What should I be doing to make sure that they last the longest and look the best that they can? Well, we'll find out when Weather and Ag in Focus returns. Celebrating 100 years with $100. Listen every Thursday all year long as we thank you for being a loyal WDAY listener. This is our year and we want to make it yours too by giving you cash. Listen during Bonnie and Friends, The Coffee Club, WDAY Midday, and The Jay Thomas Show. And if you hear the cue to call, be caller 9 and win. $100 from the station celebrating 100 years all year long. AM 970 and FM 93.1 WDAY. Are you suffering from neuropathy? Do you experience stabbing, numbness, tingling, or burning in your feet? Are you tired of sleepless nights and avoiding life due to pain? If you've been diagnosed with neuropathy or have pain or numbness in your feet, call us right now before it's too late at 701-929-7505. Again, 701-929-7505. Neuropathy is a very serious and progressive disease where your nerves start to break down. It can lead to balance problems, complete loss of independence, and in some cases, amputation. Our program addresses the underlying causes and doesn't simply mask your symptoms with medication. In fact, many patients start to feel relief from their symptoms within weeks. There's no surgery and no use of prescription drugs. Pick up the phone and call now at 701-929-7505 or find out if you're a candidate for our neuropathy program that has changed thousands of lives. Call us today at 701-929-7505. If you're looking for a great night's sleep, I'm going to give you two suggestions. First, go to Comfort King Mattress Factory. Second, support the community and go to Comfort King Mattress Factory. They'll make you the mattress that you want for your purposes. All the money that you spend will go back into the community. Isn't that what you want? It's a win-win. You ever wonder who made your bed? Well, you should. And you should wonder what's inside of it. Come to Comfort King and we'll show you the who, what, where, when, and how. After 38 years of serving the FM area, the Hobby Hut is closing its doors. They are having a going out of business sale and that means great deals on super Christmas gift ideas like radio controlled cars and trucks. For beginners all the way up to high tech, high speed vehicles. Tons of plastic models including popular Gundam model kits, fine model trains, puzzles, and games. The going out of business sale with great deals for Christmas at the Hobby Hut between IHOP and Home Depot just off 45th Street and 17th Avenue South in Fargo. North Dakota is a special place. Oil and gas supports more than 60,000 jobs in the state of North Dakota. And the industry is vital to our economy, adding nearly $4 billion in state and local tax revenues. Why would we buy oil from dictators when we have it right here? We produce it the cleanest, the greenest of anywhere in the world. Keep creating great jobs and right here in North Dakota. We support North Dakota oil and gas. Paid for by American Experiments, North Dakota. AmericanExperimentND.org. And hey, welcome back to Weather and Ag in Focus. I'm meteorologist Justin Storm here with Chief Meteorologist Dean Wysocki as well as Ag Director Bridget Riedel. It's 121 in the afternoon right now. If you're uh, out and about driving here in the FM Metro, well, get ready. We're about to have a little healthy spot band of snow push into the area that will likely drop visibility under a half a mile at least for probably about an hour if you're heading west or north on i-29 i-94 you'll be driving right into that band of snow if you're driving south or east on i-29 or a 94 you will be driving out of it but just a fair heads up for those out and about it's my pleasure to reintroduce randy nelson again clay county extension educator welcome back to weather and ag and focus randy how's your day going hi justin hi bridget hi dean so far, so good. I, I could do without the snow, but uh, I don't have a choice. <laughs> they don't give me one either, Randy. They just tell me I got to roll with this every day. No. She tells us the day she doesn't want it to snow, and we pencil those down for days to make it snow. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's a little maddening, I got to say. It's a little maddening right now. Randy, uh... I'll, I'll start off here with a question. So, um, 
was thinking of getting a live Christmas tree this year for the first time. Mm -hmm. And I know some friends have gotten live trees. They've already picked them up, and they brought them in the house, and they're already dropping needles. Is is that just because they need water? Could it be a disease? I mean, it's kind of early for them to be dropping needles. Would it not be? Or is it – what would what would be causing that, and how can you reverse that, if you will? I agree. It is a bit early to be dropping needles. A few things that come to my mind. One, um, if the tree happened to be – you know, on the lot for quite a while, um, that that could be part of it. But usually if you go out, you're looking for your tree, you know, find one that has mostly all green needles on there. There should be very few brown needles. And then run your fingers over those needles and they, for the most part, should stay on. You might lose a couple here and there. And then you can also gently just tap the tree on the ground too. You shouldn't see a lot of needle loss at that point. If it looks good, once you bring it home, before you actually put it in your tree stand, go ahead and make a fresh cut. You know, these trees have been cut typically for a while, unless you go out and actually cut your own tree, but typically they've been cut for a while. So that end is essentially going to seal off with sap. By making a fresh cut, maybe a half inch or an inch is what you want to take off the bottom, then that water can freely flow up the, the xylem. So that could have been part of the problem where maybe they didn't make a fresh cut in the tree. And then once you get that into your tree stand, make sure you are keeping an eye on water because that first day they could go through maybe a gallon, even up to two gallons of water because they're usually pretty dry. And then after that, you know, it could be about a a half gallon a day and it's important Mm -hmm. not to let it dry out because then you can start losing needles. Now I've heard that it's good to put, is it sugar in, in the stand with the water? Is that true? Or is that a myth? There, there, there could be some truth to that. When it comes to Christmas trees, I wouldn't worry about putting any additives in. I would just use straight tap water or well water and uh, put it in. If it could be on the lukewarm side, I think would be ideal. But, I mean, even if you're using cold water, I don't think you're going to have an issue with it. When it comes to additives in there, some of those can cause more problems, um, so I would avoid them. That said, if you have cut flowers, if you've ever gone to the store, you get cut flowers. Usually you get a packet that comes along with it. And in that packet, usually there's a sugar source. There's going to be something in there to reduce microorganisms. And usually there's something in there too to lower uh, pH. All those help to extend the, the life of cut flowers. Um, so when you talk about adding sugar for cut flowers, may not be a bad idea. But again, for Christmas trees, I would just use straight water. So, Randy, I just want to recap what I what I heard right there. Basically, you said those little packets that come are sugar source, so that's for the fresh cut flowers, not your coffee. And I'm pretty sure that <laughs> Dean's going to go get his own tree, so we're just going to call him Clark Griswold for the rest of the day. Uh, he's got the flannel shirt on. All I need him to do is get the family truckster out of the parking lot and head on out. <laughs> <laughs> Tie it to the top of the station wagon on the way home. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Oh, please do. Please. Well, well, staying on the Christmas theme, uh, we had an email or sent us an email. They want to know, they just bought these uh, poinsettias from Sam's Club. They want to know if there's anything special that they can do to keep them looking the way that they do for the longest period of time, just to make sure that they're healthy and they get a good life out of these poinsettias. Any tips for that? couple things to... Keep in mind, when you go to place them, if you can put them in an area that's not next to a register or next to a door, so you don't have huge swings in temperature, that's certainly going to help to extend life. And especially if you, in the wintertime, our homes usually have pretty low humidity to start with. If you put them Mm -hmm. next to a a register, you got dry air coming out. So that can can reduce their life. And then keep an eye on, on moisture, usually with poinsettias. Once that surface starts to dry out a little bit, go ahead, bring it over to the sink, give it a really good soaking, allow that water to drain out the bottom, and then go ahead and put it back. So again, try to keep keep it away from drafts and make sure it has enough water. I see. And what about for those, and this would be Bridget, uh, they want to keep their poinsettias after the season through the upcoming year and maybe try and keep them alive for the following holiday season any tips for that or anything special you should do with them after afterwards because they kind of lose their color a bit after a while don't they 
they they they do. Typically, they're gonna they're gonna fall off. And actually, Bridget shared some photos before of her poinsettia, and it is absolutely beautiful. These plants can actually get quite large. And in fact, in Mexico, where they're native, I mean, they're almost like a street tree. Um, they're oh, wow. they're huge. Mm. When it comes to trying to get them the color again, so what we're looking at in, in terms of the the color on the poinsettia. It's actually a leaf. It's known as a modified leaf. So the actual flower, if you look at a poinsettia, you go to the center, you'll see some small yellow flowers. That That's the actual flower. But the color that we're looking for is on that modified leaf. And the only way to get that is that they need to have long nights. And some people call them a short day plant. Some call them a long night plant. But you need to start reducing the, the amount of, of light that they're going to receive. So when you're done with them you know, after Christmas, keep them inside, put them in a sunny spot, and then when you can get them outdoors, go ahead and put them outside, um, slowly put them into full sunlight so you don't burn the foliage, and let them grow. Some people will even plant them in their garden if they have a, you know, a safe spot where they're not going to get damaged, and they'll leave them outside and just before um, it's going to get real cold, probably when the temperatures are around 50 or so, plan on bringing that back inside. And then at that point, you're going to want to start giving them, um, you want to start reducing the light. And it's a little more challenging with poinsettias because they need absolute darkness. Ideally, you're mm -hmm. going to give them at least 16 hours of darkness. And, and you can put a black plastic bag over them or stick them in a closet, but you want to make sure that that light is not interrupted. And you're going to have to do that for several weeks. And then you're going to start seeing some color develop on those on those bracts and then at that point usually you can stop that that treatment so you can certainly bring them around to coloring again it it takes mm -hmm. a little bit of work i see uh, bridget how big I, are those poinsettias you got now i haven't seen well the photo. i'm gonna get a picture of them i'll get a picture of them on break and that way we have a chance to put them up for our viewers to see them and then we'll also have them on our facebook page but mine are fairly large and i am breaking every rule that randy just gave us because they're in a south window i do not put them away at night uh -oh. they are close to a register i should just put an irrigation system on it because i am watering like a maniac all the time so i'm gonna have to try to fix all of that after this conversation but i'm gonna get a picture of that while the rest of you are listening to a commercial and then we'll be back with randy nelson clay county extension educator who's answering all of our holiday plant questions be right back well, President Trump has announced, and now Ron DeSantis is rising fast in the polls. Newsmax is conducting an urgent poll. Do you want Donald Trump or Ron DeSantis as your candidate in 2024? It's a big question. Newsmax wants to know what you think. Vote in the Newsmax poll, Trump versus DeSantis. Just text the word ZONE to 39747. That's ZONE to 39747. It only takes seconds. Let your voice be heard. Every day I tune into Newsmax for news I can trust. They're even beating CNN in some key ratings. So make the switch and vote in Newsmax poll on Trump versus DeSantis. Text the word ZONE to 39747. One more time, the word ZONE to 39747. And make the switch to Newsmax today. You'll love it. Your new one-stop shop for the latest in news, weather, sports, and community happenings is WDAYRadioNow.com. Stay up to date online, on your phone, on the go. Interviews with newsmakers, all your favorite local shows on demand for those days when you don't want to miss anything. Get your forecast so you're always in the know when it comes to the weather and find information on shows and personalities. If it's happening now, it's happening on WDAYRadioNow.com. That's WDAYRadioNow.com. Holiday Lights is bigger and better. The drive through Light Show is now at the fairgrounds. Jump in the car and head out to the event that is merry and bright. Brought to you by Christmas Decor and Cass County Electric. Buy tickets online and save at RedRiverValleyFair.com. Gift wrap your home this holiday season in any color of the rainbow. Whether it's window treatments, shades, wood finishes, wallpaper, or paints and supplies, Hirschfield has everything you need to spruce up your home. 
Our team of trusted experts are here to help answer all your questions and help make your decorating dreams come true. Everyone here at Hirschfields would like to thank you for your continued business and wish you a Christmas full of happiness and cheer. Hirschfields, your color experts. Is your family stuck in a boring rut for entertainment? Oh, 63. Bring the gang to Sweet Shots, your new hub for family entertainment and great food, plus a variety of golf games powered by Top Tracer technology while in a heated bay. Sweet Shots provides the clubs, the balls, and you can enjoy apps or a signature burger from our Scratch Kitchen and a cocktail from one of our four full-service bars. Meet, play, dine at Sweet Shots Fargo. For the moment when you first ask, and for all the moments you have made together since that day. Royal Jewelers wants to help you celebrate this Christmas with something that lets your loved one know how much you appreciate all those moments that you have shared along the way. Royal Jewelers has been helping people in the Red River Valley celebrate Christmas for over 95 years. Let Royal help you make Christmas memorable with the perfect gift. Royal Jewelers, downtown Fargo. You can always count on Miller High Life, the champagne of beers. Always crisp, always easy drinking, always just right. The perfect balance of flavor and refreshment since 1903. Welcome to the High Life. Twenty nineteen Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Celebrate responsibly. Welcome, everyone. So glad you are joining us on WDAY Weather and Ag in Focus. I'm Bridget Riedel, Ag Director, along with Chief Meteorologist Dean Wysocki and Justin Storm, Meteorologist Extraordinaire. We have an awesome conversation going with Randy Nelson, Clay County Extension Educator. And I know that many of you out there have questions as well regarding your Christmas live trees, your poinsettias and all the other holiday plants that you may have in the house right now and you just want to find out more information so call us at 701-293-9000 or drop us some emails weather or ag at flagfamily.com now randy you gave us a great sheet about poinsettia care that i'm going to post on our facebook page after we get done today but i do have one quick question about poinsettias as well oftentimes we're told that pets or children can find them toxic. So A, don't feed poinsettias to those folks, but B, is that really true? Will that white sap in the poinsettia, is that a toxicity that can injure some people or pets? Great question. And if, if a person or a pet were to consume enough, I'm sure there could be an issue. That said, they're not, they're not poisonous uh, in the sense that if you were to ingest a leaf uh, or a pet was to ingest just, you know, a, a leaf or, or a little bit of a stem, it's certainly not going to kill them. So a person doesn't have to be worried there. But again, they're not meant to consume. So if you can keep them out of reach of children and pets, you're going to be in good shape. But there shouldn't be any fear of, of having a poinsettia uh, just because of that. Well, okay, then I'm not breaking that one rule with my poinsettias. So that's one. And uh, on for those who are watching online, you can see the picture of the poinsettias in my kitchen. Crammed in between them is a little indoor hydrangea, and to the far right of it is a lemon tree that apparently all of a sudden decided to bloom like nuts because for three years it gave me three lemons, and now it seems to think it's going to give me a whole bag of them so we'll see how that turns out Ooh. maybe you guys will all be getting lemonade when i'm done with this <laughs> we'll see you know i'm not going to say no to some uh, fresh lemonade all right well i'm going to ask a question in regards to a different holiday plant and i never say it right it's the amaryllis is that correct the that is correct that you force up like a paper whites i think is another name for it um I've never heard of it people Okay, so people get this thing as gifts. It's like a great big bulb. You put it in a pot and you try to force it. So it it's almost reminds me of like an Easter lily. What do you do with that thing, Randy? If you get that as a gift this time of year, what should you do with that plant? Any ideas or any suggestions for Actually, our folks who are listening? They're, they're, they're really easy to care for. In fact, I will show one right here. This is kind of a... Uh, 
a sickly looking one. This actually came in last year, and I'm just going to pull it out of the pot just a little bit here, and you can actually see the, the top of the bulb on there. And when you get these in the store, um, usually they're not going to be uh, in soil, and then just go ahead and, and plant them once you get home. If you went to a nursery, sometimes you can get these already potted up, but then all you have to do is put it, um, really you could put it anywhere in your house. If you could allow it to have some filtered sunlight, uh, that would be ideal, and uh, it's going to go ahead and bloom. Usually the flower stalk is going to start to emerge first on there, and then usually it's going to be followed by a few leaves. Um, usually the larger the bulb, the better, um, because you're just going to get more flower with a larger bulb. Sometimes you can get up to two stalks on, on some of the larger bulbs. So they're a really easy plant to grow. Just keep the soil moist. They don't like a lot of water. Uh, but again, keep it evenly moist. And then after they're done blooming, you can just clip the flowers off and you can wait. That stock is green, so it's photosynthesizing. Once the stock yellows, you can go ahead and clip that out. And then uh, from there, um, just leave the leaves on because again, they're green, they're photosynthesizing. Once it warms up, try to get them outdoors so they get in full sunlight because the, the leaves need to produce enough photosynthate so they can get a flower developed for the following season. Hmm. Okay. All right. I, Good to know. I got a couple of a couple of questions here. My mother has uh, a Christmas cactus, is what it what it's called, and it gets these long, almost banana-like red flowers on it. Although she's never been able to get it to flower over the past two years. Well, this year she tried something new, and she put it underneath the grow light that my dad has for his pineapple plant, and the thing is blooming like no other. So my question is, what kind of plants would benefit the most from a grow light this time of year? Great question, and in fact, with your Christmas cactus, I have one there right it here. Is. Just picked one up a, uh, a couple of weeks ago, and, and you know these are are a great house plant. They're relatively easy to care for. It, it's interesting because you look at it; it looks more like a succulent, but it is a true cactus. Mm -hmm. And these are actually native to rainforests, so typically they're going to be caught up in trees, where they're you know growing maybe where, where two branches meet. So they like um, decent humidity. Not a whole lot of rain, but you want to make sure that the soil remains moist. And after that, um, they do uh, they seem to do a pretty decent job of, of just maintaining themselves. They're pretty hard to kill unless you overwater them. Uh, in terms of, of grow lights, most of our plants this time of the year are going to benefit from being under there, usually anywhere from 10 to 12 hours. Uh, just because this time of the year with the sun, the way it's setting in the sky, it, uh, we're just not getting as much light as we did during the, during the growing season. And, and now with LED lights, you know, the cost of, of having those on is substantially reduced. So it's, it's more convenient for a lot of people to do it. Mm -hmm. And we had another email question come in. They were wondering if they had any bugs that were brought into their house from outdoor plants when they brought them in for the season and those plants so they didn't die in the cold weather if there's any tips to deal with the bugs that were left in the soil when they brought them in great question one that could have been brought in could be aphids they're real common and they have a they will feed on the on the plant juices usually you can see them um, on the plant usually they're kind of a pear-shaped uh, insect and sometimes just simply washing that plant in the sink you can dislodge a lot of those and get rid of them. Usually it's going to be, you're going to have to repeat that a few times to uh, get rid of them. Spider mites, usually it's a two-spotted spider mite. They're real common just because they like dry conditions. So they tend to flare up this time of the year in the house. And oftentimes you can see some webbing and you get some yellowing on the foliage too because they're, they're feeding on, on uh, plant juices. That too, you can sometimes wash those off but it's going to be, you're going to have to repeat that. There are insecticidal soaps that people could purchase. They're relatively safe. You want to make sure you follow all label directions, um, but it is a soap. And some people will make up their own using a, some type of a dish detergent, but some of those can cause phytotoxicity to your plants. So if you're concerned, I always recommend actually buying a uh, insecticidal soap and usually they have um, potassium salts of fatty acid 
is what the active ingredient is. So they can try washing right. and they also can try the, the insecticidal soap. How about, have you, are you familiar with uh, neem oil or neem oil extract sprays? I, I sure am. And in some cases that can work on some of the insect pests too. And for the most part, it is uh, relatively safe to use as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I went out to the store and I purchased some because I got the fungus flies uh, or fungus gnats, I think is what they're called. They're, little, like, they're almost like fruit flies almost, but uh, they were coming out of the dirt in the banana tree that we left out this summer. And I just sprayed the dirt and a little bit on the leaves and I haven't had an issue with any of them outside of with my uh i got a little catchy too it's like a little fan that attracts them all and then it just sucks them up and kills them but the the spray did a really good job with killing the eggs that were in the soil and the uh, i'm glad you brought up fungus gnats justin because they can be a real issue oftentimes when uh, mm -hmm. if a, it's not always the case but oftentimes if they're if a plant is over water they, they tend to like moisture because those larvae will be feeding in the soil typically on organic matter but you can get some root damage as well and then usually the adults don't fly very far. So sometimes even letting the soil dry a little bit longer between waterings, that itself can help to reduce the population. And hey Randy, I've got a uh, email question from one of our listeners. Connie says, I love getting live Christmas trees. They smell so good in the house, but I have a male dog who constantly wants to do his business <laughs> on the bottom of the tree. Is there anything I can spray on it to alleviate this from happening. Uh, oh my goodness. That, that is a great question. And I, I wish I had a good answer for that. Um, I don't. Okay. Uh, any thoughts from anybody here? Well, I never had that issue, but our dogs would like to eat the leaves off of our plant. So he would go back and he'd pick on the same one. So it was already basically dying. We rubbed a little bit of hot sauce on the leaf and he never came back to oh. eat that plant. But I don't know about the other end. Okay. <laughs> yeah. The best I can do for you, Dean, is to put like a kid's playpen around the tree to keep the dog away. But at my house, it's actually a plastic tree and I just spray it with like balsa wood smelling room deodorizer and I totally cheat and nobody realizes it until they get up close. Okay. <laughs> so I, I, I never vacuum up pine needles. So. That's perfect. <laughs> oh. uh, Randy, your conversations are always so much fun. I have been getting a pile of text messages from people. I'm just barely keeping up over here who are saying how much they are enjoying this. And also, um, for the banana tree, um, the comment was, oh, yes, I must remember to water my trees and a banana tree. Who are these people who can keep this type of thing alive? So you guys are all horticultural <laughs> geniuses in, in the light of several folks who are listening today. So this has been great. Um, I did have one last question for you, Randy, from me, and that is, would this be a good time to dust your house plants? I know that sounds stupid, but I looked at one of mine the other day, and um it's looking a little thick in the dust department. Perhaps I should wipe that thing off. Maybe? Oh, Bridget, great, great question. And it's it's not crazy at all because, you know, if it, house plants, because not everybody brings their house plants outside. In fact, I mean, we have some that, you know, are indoors year round. And I guarantee you, I do not dust those off when, you know, we're going through and, and dusting off shelves or whatnot. So you do get a buildup on there and that does reduce photosynthesis so now would be a great time to go through and and give them a good cleaning and if they're real large I mean you could take a damp cloth and just wipe off individual leaves if they're smaller and you can actually move the plants stick them in a sink give them a good hosing off or maybe even better yet stick them in the shower and just give them a really good shower get the leaves washed off let them dry and then go ahead and place them back you see, I didn't even think about the shower. That would be probably work out really great because a lot of the plants like to have their leaves misted anyways. Right. All right. I got I got one more for you, Randy, before we got to get on out of here. Um, what is and what's going on with your newsletter right now? Well, in the newsletter... Uh, for December, we had a, a few tips in there on, on poinsettia care. We do have a land rent seminar coming up. It's online on December 14th. And if anybody wants to register for that, they can certainly go to the uh, University of Minnesota Extension Clay County website 
and uh, there'll be a link on there, and you can just click on that because you need to get the Zoom link um, set to you. And there's also some information on tax planning uh, for agriculture. Mm -hmm. In fact, there was a, a webinar going on today, but if you happen to miss that, that is being recorded. So you can certainly watch that at a later date. Awesome. That's and awesome. if anyone wants to sign up for your news uh, newsletter or if they want to get in contact with you, how could they do so? They could reach me by phone at 218-299-7338 or they can reach me by email at nels1657 at umn.edu. They can just let me know that they want to sign up and I will certainly get them signed up for the newsletter. Awesome. Great. Well, Randy Nelson, Clay County Extension Educator, thank you very much for joining us here on Weather and Ag and Focus again. And I was kind of joking around earlier, we basically got to make you an honorary co-host at this point and, <laughs> because you're on with us all the time. But we're uh, we're looking forward to having you on again here in maybe another month or two and uh, see what's going on as we project our way towards spring after we get out of the rut of winter. That sounds great. And thank you so much for having me on. It is always a blast. Thanks. All right, when Weather and Ag in Focus returns, we're going to get to our ag topics that we need to get to today, and we'll take another look at that forecast. And yes, we're still dealing with the blowing snow out there with the snow showers. We'll touch on that, let you know when it's going to end, coming up when we return. Take it from the people that own one. Hot spring spas and pool tables, too, is the best. Here's Dennis to tell us why. I knew Vince for a number of years through the YMCA. So he had been after me a long time to think about this, to get one. You're going to feel good. And I said, Vince, I'm going to buy one from you. And that's what I did. It's so relaxing. We have the stereo on outside in the deck. It promotes time of relaxation and a time of fellowship. And it's been wonderful. Hot spring spas, pool tables, too. West Fargo, Bismarck, and Grand Forks, too. It's Jane Ronnie from the Coffee Club, and we love my pillow. We absolutely love the Giza Dream Sheets, made with the world's best cotton, grown only in a region between the Sahara Desert, the Mediterranean Sea, and the Nile River. Its long staple cotton makes it ultra soft and breathable. Yeah, let me tell you, this 400 thread count, they are fantastic sheets. They are warm when you need to be warm. They are cool when you need to have very thin layer between you and the mattress. It is a fantastic sleep with Giza Dream Sheets, 60-day money-back guarantee, machine washable and durable, and a 10-year warranty. Available in multiple colors, styles, and sizes. All right now for a great low price of $29.99 with promo code WDAY. All you need to do is go to MyPillow.com, go to Listener Radio Special Box, put in the promo code WDAY. MyPillow.com, go to Listener Radio Special Box, put in the promo code WDAY. Promo code WDAY. Why? Fair Meadow Nursing Home in Fertile, Minnesota is expanding their team and they're looking for you. If you're looking for a great career in nursing as a CNA, LPN, housekeeping aide, or dietary aide, check out their new wage scale, shift differential pay, benefits, and free premium for single health plan for 30 plus hours a week, flexible schedule, great retirement, and more. Be part of their dynamic interdisciplinary team environment. Apply in person or visit their Facebook page at Fair Meadow Nursing Home and Assisted Living, Fertile, Minnesota. Wheat, corn, and soybean oil under pressure with soybeans and meal and livestock mostly higher on Friday. This is the American Ag Network of Jesse Allen with this closing market update. Well, as we take a look at the soybean complex, it had expanded daily trading limits on Friday after soy oil locked its daily limit lower on Thursday. Those daily limits were not tested, but we did see soy oil prices continue to feel the pressure of fund liquidation as traders rethink their positions. There were a lot of long positions in bean oil that all just kind of whittled away here the last two days. Soybeans did bounce a little bit on Friday, finding some support levels and uh, finding a little bit of buying. Meantime, in corn and wheat, we see a little bit of chart damage there as we had selling pressure continue breaking through some support levels. And it'll be interesting to see what the market does here, trying to find the new price support levels, maybe to stimulate a little demand, especially in the corn market as we move into the month of December. 
Final numbers on Friday, cord four, December 15, lower 635. March cord down 14 at a quarter, 646 at a quarter. January beans, eight and three quarters higher, 1438 and a half. March up nine and three quarters, 1446 and a half. January bean meal up 250 a ton, 424.10. January soybean oil down 216 points, 6522. December Chicago wheat, 21 and a half lower, 737 and a quarter. March down 22, 761. March KC wheat down 19 and a half, 870 and three three quarters spring wheat december down 10 and a quarter 944 and a quarter march spring wheat down 16 to three quarters 921 and a quarter live cattle december up 30 153 35 february up 45 155 87 feeder cattle january up 137 182 45 march up 97 185 27 december hogs down 70 82 42 february hogs up 122 at 90 42 this is the american ag network i'm jesse allen Welcome back to Weather and Ag in Focus. Thanks for rejoining us. I'm meteorologist Justin Storm with Chief Meteorologist Dean Wysocki and Ag Director Bridget Riedel. We just got done speaking with Randy Nelson, Clay County Extension Educator on all of the holiday plant care and tips. And very fun conversation. If you did miss it or you joined halfway through, head on over to our YouTube or Facebook page, Weather and Ag in Focus. You can re-listen to that as well as get information there on how you can subscribe to Randy Nelson's newsletter. Right now, 14 degrees out there. Snow continues to push across eastern North Dakota, leading to winter weather advisories extending from northeastern South Dakota into northern Minnesota. And we're going to continue seeing some of this icky weather push through the area, dropping visibility at times under a half a mile to a quarter mile. Let's take a quick look and see what that is going to continue to look like over the next few hours. Dean, what's that forecast on uh, this winter weather advisory that continues to affect our area for this afternoon? Yeah, it does. And uh, in the FM area right now, we've got visibility quarter mile or less, uh, about a quarter mile uh, here at the studios and even heavier snow just to the north of the FM area. Harwood, uh, Brook Tree Park, seeing some heavy bands of snow and that continues northward into areas of northwestern Minnesota. Uh, the snow should start to taper off at least the heavy snow by about oh, three o'clock, between three and four. The back edge of the heavier snow out around Tower City. Uh, so that has a push through here. So probably about three o'clock, 3.30ish, we start to taper off uh, and just see some scattered snow showers. Again, we're looking at about an inch accumulation. Uh, some spots may pick up a little bit more than that, maybe up to two, but uh, uh, it's going to be hard to measure with it blowing around. The, and the visibility is going to be the problem with this snow as we head into the uh, next couple of hours. It's not necessarily the, the roadways will get a little slick, but uh, I think the visibility uh, is going to be the big problem for sure. Uh, taking a look at uh, the road conditions, uh, it Basically, from West Fargo out through Valley City, scattered slippery spots, and then much of the same from Jamestown all the way out through Bismarck on 94. Uh, going south on 29, uh, normal conditions. Going north, a uh, little bit of a scattered slippery spots uh, around the Hillsboro area, and then uh, also from Grand Forks northward. So all in all, it's really not too, too bad out there. Uh, the visibility is the big problem, but over the next couple of hours as this heavier snow band pushes through, we will see the reduced visibility and probably, uh, yeah, some uh, some scattered slippery spots. But uh, all in all, I mean, f for our area, this isn't too, too bad, but just leave some extra time to get to your destination and uh, make sure that winter weather survival kit is packed as well if you're going to be out tonight because although the snow will be out of here by around 6 o'clock or so, we're looking at uh, bitterly cold wind chills and a wind chill advisory with wind chills about 20, 25 below tonight. You don't want to get stuck. You don't want to get stuck outside in that. So just kind of uh, do your typical winter prep and uh, leave a little extra time to get to your destination. Okay, guys, and I think we should do a little pop quiz. What are the things that should be in that winter survival kit for those of you who are going out on the road? Uh, as someone who drives a half ton pickup, but it can be kind of a light body weight, uh, I have a tendency to throw in a couple of sandbags and a shovel. What are the things you guys uh, are carrying? Cat, cat litter is good as well. You get some real good uh, traction on cat litter. Make sure you have an um, extra pair of gloves, a scarf. Um, have something, maybe some flares. Uh, or something bright colored, let's say something orange, um, where you could uh, uh, kind of tie to something in case your vehicle gets stranded, easier to see. Um, what, what else would you throw in there, Justin? 
And don't say well, liquor. I'd always make sure. Uh, well, <laughs> you can't do that, Dean. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, you always want to make sure you got a little bit of extra food in there in case you do find yourself stuck on the side of the road in the ditch. You're stuck there overnight or, you know, even for a day at some time. So make sure you got some extra water, some food, uh, a flashlight, jumper cables in case that battery ends up dying. You know, never let that car in the winter uh, go under a quarter tank. I always try and keep my car filled at at least a half a tank just for that reason. A quarter tank will make you through the night. A half a tank will get you through a day. So if you have to have that car running the entire time. Tow ropes are great in case you get stuck someone stops by they can help you get out as well as some blankets so uh, maybe even a cell phone charger would be a good thing to keep in there oh a really good thing and uh, as someone who grew up on the farm where my dad put the fear of god in us what would happen if we did wind up stranded at the side of the road or in a ditch somewhere because this was certainly pre-cell phone days and you can't rely on a cell phone to always have good service we find that every day when all three of us travel right that can happen anywhere unexpectedly mm -hmm. so don't rely on your phone but I also carry uh, my bib coveralls. I have an extra coat. I have a blanket and those great little heater packets. They're the little orange bags you can buy at most hardware stores or at Shields and you can slide them in your gloves and boots and they provide at least four hours of heat. So that can be very helpful if uh, you don't start out with a half or full tank of gas like Justin recommended. So those are some pretty good tips we mm -hmm. wanna keep in mind as well. There's another good thing. If you ever do find yourself stuck in a blizzard side of the road, don't leave your car looking for help. You see a light, you're like, oh, that must be a house. It's a quarter mile down the road. A lot of times out here, it's just a simple little uh, station or a, something like that, just giving off a little bit of light. You end up walking there, and then you're not able to make it back to your vehicle. Or, and sometimes you get disoriented, and you can't even get to where you're trying to get to. So just always stay put and don't move. But, Bridget, why don't we do a, an egg topic here really quick? What's going on with sure. the Minnesota corn growers looking for research projects? Let's say you have a great idea, and I know you, Justin, you always have a great idea. You can apply for That's grant on. money from the Minnesota Corn Growers. Go to mncorn.org and find the information about applying for a research grant. If you are an ag student, scientist, farmer, or perhaps you're a group at a college and you have a project that you want to have funded, particularly in the areas of new uses, methods to improve nutrient use and efficiencies, uh, enhancing air and water quality, or improving biodiversity, you can apply for some funding from Minnesota Corn Growers. And they'd love to see those applications. They're not due until the new year, so you've got some time to present your ideas and get them on paper. Please, if you don't remember the link, email me, agateflagfamily, and I will send it to you. And well, that's great. That, that's and gonna about do it, isn't it? I, yeah. I think that it just there, might. Guys. Unless we wanna rob some time from Jay Thomas's show, which we are doing on December 7th from two to five o'clock in the afternoon. We're taking over his entire show. Whether he likes it or not, we're doing our LRC winter special, and we hope that you join us from 2 to 5 o'clock in the afternoon, December 7th, right here on WDAY. You can also find it and watch live on YouTube and Facebook at either WDAY 970 or Weather and Ag in Focus. Both YouTube and Facebook pages will have that either during or at least shortly after it is concluded. But mark that on your calendar. Again, December 7th, LRC Winter Special. Myself, Dean, and Bridget, as well as Gary Lezak, a former chief meteorologist from Kansas City. He's just retiring here in a couple of days, so he'll be joining us as well. But we're going to make room for Jay Thomas so he doesn't end up uh, throwing something at Dean here because we're already <laughs> going to do his show. He's already giving me the evil eye. <laughs> yeah, get off. This is my time. We'll be back on Monday, 1 to 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Until then, everyone have a safe and great weekend. Jay Thomas Show is coming up next. 970 WDAYA.